5370 has been canceled at the request of staff. And next are the public, rela public hearing rules of conduct. This public hearing falls under section 465 of the Local Government Act. Copies of written submissions are on display at the reception desk near the entrance to City Hall. During this public hearing, anyone who believes their interest is affected by the proposed bylaws or permits will be given a reasonable opportunity to be heard. Please restrict comments to the issues related specifically to the proposed application. Each time you come forward to speak, please provide your name and address, which will be recorded and form part of the official record. To start, all speakers will have up to five minutes to make their presentation. After everyone that wants to speak has spoken once, there will be a second opportunity to speak. This time speakers will have up to three minutes. This process will continue until there are no further comments for Council's consideration. We want to hear from everyone and no one should feel discouraged or prevented from making their views known. Members of Council may ask questions of a speaker for clarification, but the main function of council members this evening is to listen to the views of the public with an open mind and not engage in debate with speakers. Please re refrain from applause or other expressions of approval or disapproval. After this public hearing has concluded, council may immediately discuss the application and make a decision. If council needs more time to consider what they have heard or requires further information, the discussion and decision will take place at a later date. Madam Clerk. And the first item on tonight's agenda is a public hearing for zoning bylaw amendment number 5366 with respect to property located at 46185 Stevenson Road. And we've received in a public engagement package. Ms. Bilner. Your Worship, members of Council, the purpose of this application is to rezone the property from an urban duplex residential zone to an urban infill zone to facilitate a future subdivision and a location map orthophoto of the subject property as outlined in red. The 2040 official community plan designates the property as urban residential. The property can, currently contains a single detached dwelling. A conceptual site plan has been provided by the applicant as shown on the screen. Overall, the proposal is consistent with the OCP designation and infill policy and a site maintenance plan has been submitted by the property owner indicating the property will remain tenanted and upkept until time of redevelopment. This is for property at 46185 <coughs> Stevenson Road. Thank you, Ms. Villeneuve. Anybody here wishes to speak into rezoning application 1727 for the property located at 46185 Stevenson Road? And for a second time, a third and a final time, move to refer, move Councilor Mercer, second Councilor Shields. All those in favor, opposed, the item has been referred and what that means is we're gonna go through all the applications and we'll come back and make a decision at that point. Next item, Madam Clerk. Next is a public hearing for temporary use permit 218 with respect to property located at 101A 43869 Progress Way and we have received a public engagement package. Thank you, Ms. Villeneuve. And the purpose of this application is to permit the operation of a culinary business offering catering services and instructional cooking classes within the Comprehensive Development 10 zone on the subject property. And the property is outlined in red on Progress Way. The 2040 OCP designates the property as general industrial. The property contains a multi-tenanted building with occupants including light industrial, tradesperson and office uses. There is an existing legally non-conforming restaurant that was permitted under the previous zoning bylaw as a convenience commercial use. The proposal is to add catering, cooking classes, dish rental, dinner clubs, etc., in uh, ancillary to the use. A public engagement has been completed by the applicant and the overall proposal is consistent with the scale of commercial services found in other industrial business parks in the area. Staff support the requested use as proposed and recommend approval of the draft temporary use permit subject to conditions with respect to the use as a restaurant and a culinary business offering catering services, instructional cooking classes, etc. That catering and cooking classes are to be operated outside of the hours of operation for the restaurant to ensure no parking conflicts and that a valid business license be secured for property at 101A 43869 Progress Way. Thank you, Ms. Villeneuve. Anybody here wishes to speak into TUP 218 for the property located at 101A 43869 Progress Way? Yep, it's up to the mic. 
I'll just need your name and your address just to form part of the record, please. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Elizabeth Grimaldi, the applicant. Um, so I live at 44706 oh, Riverwood Crescent, um, but we own the unit number 101A 43869 Progress Way. Good. Good. Go ahead. Oh, did, did you have any questions or did you? I just wanted to make it clear that I'm here if there's any questions. Okay. Okay. Just maybe stay at the mic there in case there are some questions. Council, any questions? Sounds pretty straightforward. Okay, uh, you're gonna get off lucky then. Good, okay, Thank you. great. Anybody else for first time? Go ahead, up, up, up at the mic. Sorry. Oh. oh, okay, okay. Uh, and for a second time, and a third and a final time, <laughs> move to refer, move Councillor Lum, second Councillor Westrink. Any discussion, all those in favor, opposed, the item has been referred, next item. Next is a public information meeting for the 2024 financial plan bylaw number 5372. Uh, and we have received three emails of correspondence. Okay. Mr. Savard. Thank you, Your Worship. The 2024 financial plan bylaw was introduced at the November 21st regular meeting of council. The city continues to be in an enviable financial position, uh, having zero debt, continued provision of low property taxes and fees while providing quality facilities, amenities, and services to the community. We continue to experience persistent high levels of inflation in the cost for operation and services. Uh, municipalities are not immune from the effects of inflation, and all municipalities are facing similar overall pressures to service delivery. This presents cost containment challenges for service provisions, including contracted services such as the RCMP, and for routine and preventative maintenance and operation of city facilities and infrastructure. Inflation and non-discretionary costs offer very little in the way of flexibility uh, to maintain service levels and ensure infrastructure is being appropriate, appropriately maintained. As an example, with the roads asphalt repaving program, the cost of asphalt has seen a 46% increase in cost since 2021. This means that without a budgetary increase to address the cost escalation, less roads would be repaved and the overall program would fall behind. When facing high inflation for 2023, most municipalities in the region approved higher tax increases than Chilliwack. In Chilliwack, we look to mitigate its effects on the overall tax increase by limiting the amount of additional service level inclusions. Service costs are funded through property taxation and any reduction to service levels to absorb the effects of inflation are eliminated in perpetuity, which would require a tax increase in the future if they were to be reinstated. To fund the proposed 2024 financial plan, a tax increase of 7.32% is incorporated. This includes 5.55% to ensure the city's financial obligations and inflation is, are met and infrastructure and facilities are duly maintained with an additional 1.77% included to address various service needs. To support objectives for a safe community, service additions include three RCMP members, five RCMP support and community policing resources, and one firefighter. The three RCMP members have been prioritized to support general policing services, case files per member, and community response. The five RCMP support and community policing resources have been prioritized to support general policing, community policing, and technology support. These support resources very often uh, provides relief to regular members, enabling them to focus on regular placing duties. The firefighter supports continued prioritization for safe and effective fire response. Service additions further include an information technology technician to assist with expanding technology requirements and support, an engineering technologist to support transportation related issues and service requests from the public, and a parks worker to support maintenance of growing parks and green space areas. Service additions also include a legislative services specialist and a long range planner to support provincial legislation. 
financial plan also includes continued ongoing activities to support the climate action plan. Some initiatives are supported through grant funding with some initiatives leading to operational cost savings. Reviewing property taxation stats and comparatives. Property taxation accounts for 72% of the city's revenue sources. Of property taxes levied on an individual tax notice, only 64% of the total represents taxes levied by the city to fund city services. The remaining 36% is levied by and collected and remitted on behalf of other government agencies, with the city having no control over the amounts that are set. Of the portion of taxes that remain with the city, 48% is allocated to protective services with placing the largest component at 36%, followed by recreation and culture, including libraries and transportation and operations, including transit. We often compare ourselves with other municipalities in the lower mainland with regards to property taxation, and in doing so, we evaluate data that's provided by the province, which separates all components of taxation, plus other service fees and charges to allow for a reliable comparison between local governments. When comparing general taxation on a representative home among 19 other lower mainland communities, Chilliwack continues to provide the lowest property taxes, just over $1,000 less than the average, and $313 lower than the next lowest community. When adding other fees, such as water, sewer, curbside waste collection, and regional district levies, Chilliwack is again providing the lowest taxes and fees, just over $2,500 lower than the average, and almost $580 lower than the next lowest community. In comparing directly with similar communities, the chart here just shows how Chilliwack is pr providing much lower property taxes and charges for the community. And Chilliwack also maintains the lowest business taxation multiple for business classification taxpayers within the community. So despite this year's service provision cost challenges, Chilliwack continues to maintain the lowest property taxation levels while providing quality facilities, amenities, and services. Providing some information with the community engagement survey results city provided again to budget uh, budgetary service survey opportunities throughout the year to receive input and feedback from the community. The responses provide council uh, with input and feedback to supplement the information received throughout the year as careful prioritization choices and decisions are made. On the question of service importance, the majority of respondents in the very important category included policing, fire protection, and homelessness issues. The majority of responses in the important category included roads and transportation, parks and trails, and other protective services. Climate action initiatives were split almost equal. Percentages between very important and not important, uh, majority of responses in the somewhat important category included recreational and cultural facilities, transit and community events, with bicycle networks almost evenly split between not important and somewhat important. On the question of property tax allocation, roads and transportation and policing were the only services where the majority of respondents selected higher allocation. For the remaining services, the majority of responses chose the same allocation. And the majority of respondents also answered that they received good value for their property tax dollars. So in summary, the financial plan fulfills the city's financial obligations. It maintains city facilities and infrastructure, addresses additional service needs while continuing to maintain low property taxation levels. And that presents the city's 2024 financial plan overview. Thank you, Mr. Savard. Now, would anybody like to speak into the proposed strategy that we have in front of us. Just, I just, yep, I, I went ahead of you there. I just need your name and your address. Just to form part of the record, please. Lisa Mori, number 5546360, Valley View Road in Chilliwack. Mayor and Council, we are privileged to meet tonight on land belonging to the Stalo people. Land that we have a duty to care for and treat with respect. Part of treating this land and the surrounding community with respect. 
is protecting it. In this case, I'm talking about fire protection and how the proposed city budget impacts that responsibility. This summer, on the evening of July 20th, a fire on a property on Chilliwack Lake Road was visible as a plume of smoke in the distance behind my house. It's my understanding that the fire department was stretched in responding to that incident, and it was due to good luck that the fire didn't spread further than it did. This past year was the hottest on record. This summer was the worst year for fires in British Columbia. The woods were especially dry that day when the fire started, and so I was actually frightened. I thought possibly this would be the one, the fire that caused an evacuation of promontory, the fire that spread from house to house and potentially killed people. After that fire, I tried repeatedly to ask the fire chief questions. When we did connect, he requested my questions by email. I sent them on September 28th. He replied December 1st, I did have a quick look today. I see that Chief Josephson has referred my question about evacuation plans for promontory to Assistant Chief Chris Wilson and I will follow up. I suggest such a plan could be a budget item. I will take a look and see what I think of it when I get a time. For this purpose, I'd like to compare promontory to Harrison Hot Springs. Unlike promontory, Harrison has its own fire department and 20 paid on call firefighters dedicated to protecting 1,905 people as of the 2021 census. One major route leads in and out of Harrison. On July 11th this year, Harrison Council unanimously voted to direct their staff to come up with a concise plan for an emergency evacuation route. On Promontory, two roads lead in and out of a community of 11,820 people. One of those roads is narrow and winding and regularly backs up during the daily commute. It's worth noting also that two narrow winding roads lead in and out of Chilliwack Mountain, population 2510, and similar routes restrict the Eastern Hillsides, population 3,450, and Little Mountain, population 1,170, all figures from the 2021 census, and we've been building steadily since then. My point, Promontory is six times more populated than Harrison Hot Springs. According to this year's financial plan, Chilliwack is budgeting for one additional firefighter. In past years, I and, I and others have said that the fire department is desperately underfunded and needs a substantial increase in fire protection. One additional firefighter is not even keeping up with growth. Once again, according to the city's own budget feedback survey, Chilliwack citizens have said additional fire protection is very important or the most important priority for them. Let's make it the city's priority too. I'm asking the city to employ an independent, reputable consultant to determine what fire protection Chilliwack needs and to fully fund the fire department according to that consultant's recommendations. Thank you. Thank you, sure. Go ahead, Councilor Mercer. Thank you, Your Worship. Just a comment on Promontory. It's near and dear to my heart because that fire was right behind uh, my house. Um, and I have the figures. The first full fire truck was on scene in just over, I called 911. Um, the first fire truck was on scene in eight minutes, two additional trucks within 13 minutes in total from the top, and then a full complement of regional district uh, fire trucks attacking it from the um, Chilliwack River Road. Within uh, 30 minutes, there was a helicopter overhead, uh, which is what the uh, province practices uh, for wildfires in bush areas. And uh, I can assure you that uh, as a resident that was under stress watching it from our deck and taking plenty of videos, uh, we felt quite comfortable and safe. And I'll leave it at that. Good. Thank you. Anybody else would like to speak into the budget, ma'am? Would you like to? Yep. Just up to the mic. Just, is your name and number, please? Or not your number, your address, I'm sorry. Just to form part of the record. Hi, uh, my name is Nola Papp, N-O-L-A-P-A-P-P, -P -P, and my address as well? Please. Yeah, 42304 South Sumas Road. Good evening. And I just wanted to comment about um, the tax increase. Um, I just had a couple of questions about, it just so happens that there was an article in the newspaper, the most recent progress, and it also mentioned the cost of asphalt. 
And I had a question about um, uh, road repair. And um, on South Sumas, between Hopedale and Sumas Prairie, there was some resurfacing done. And um, I would say within a couple of months, I don't have an exact time frame, but it got dug up to be repaved again. Like, I think there was some hookups or something going on. That's sewer, quite possible. Maybe. Yep. Yeah. So um, when it comes to coordinating things like that, is there nothing that can be done to save money on asphalt? <laughs> like you pave the road and then you rip it up a few weeks later to have something else done? Is there, how are these things coordinated? Okay, I, I would have to check with operations on, on your exact address and... and uh, Maybe Ms. Jeffers can speak into that. There we go. Through your worship to um, NOLA? Yes. Um, I, I don't have the details on that particular location. I can look into it, and if you'd like to leave your contact, get back to you. In general, our, we do try and coordinate our paving program with any underground utility work. Um, there are things that from time to time happen that are unforeseen. Um, and so sometimes there is either um, uh, works that are a result of emergency or were not known about at the time that we um, chose our paving priorities. So that could be the case in this situation. Mm -hmm. um, but in, in, in general, we do try and take a, a five-year look ahead and coordinate those works. Oh, I see. Okay, so there's no reason to look into it further. I was just curious because um, before I lived here, I lived in Surrey, and uh, the, one of the reasons why we moved was the property taxes just were too high. And, um, and um, I lived on 90th Avenue, which connected to 192, and they repaved it three times. Like it seemed like in a span of a year, and I thought, "Oh my God, what a waste of taxpayers' money!" And I couldn't understand why, you know, that was a thing. Well, if you'd so, like uh, <laughs> to make it easy for you, if you, you want to shoot me an email at maryachilbach.com, and and I can get our engineer or director of engineering to to uh, speak to you and just to give you the exact reason why that happened because we both don't know and she would know so if you want to just do that and we can get back to you okay that just, might be a possibility sure. um i don't want to waste too much of your no, time but fine. um speaking of the uh engineering department i also have a couple of questions about the work that was recently done on the dike and okay. I don't quite understand, I'm sure this is an engineering uh, question, but there's these great big huge cement pipes, uh, pipes that come out of the ground and they have lids on them. Yep. And one got knocked off, I guess last year or something. So I went and looked in it to see what was in it. And there's like this little white pipe about this big. <laughs> I'm thinking, well, if that's supposed to drain water away, it's on the farm land side of the dike yeah I'll, okay I'll let, I'll let mr blaine maybe speak into that because that's his expertise or okay yeah okay go ahead um, so the um the little white pipe i had to laugh because of the flooding that we had right and um i'm thinking well what's that little white pipe gonna do it and if the lid's not off those great big huge culverts that are vertical like, I just need to wrap my head around what that's supposed to do for people. Um, those, those are, sorry, there's a feedback on my mic. Um, those are relief wells. Um, so they don't, they don't drain water in a flood event. Um, they, um, they do, they do um, help with um, um, the relief of the pressure against the dike, but they're not oh, they're not gotcha. serving as yeah, a drainage yeah. function or, or mm -hmm. conveyance between uh, in a flood event. So the dike itself um, retains the water in that event. Okay, so where does that that white pipe go then? Does it go through it um, or under it or? I, th I think it would be best um, if we could do a follow up on this and and um, with a, a diagram. Oh, I could Offline. bring one. No, I, I, I could arrange a meeting if, if you'd like. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay? Yeah, that would be great. Okay. And um, also, having lived in Surrey, I noticed on that um, 
that list, Surrey was at the bottom at 12% or something. Like, <laughs> knock me over with a feather, but you know, it, and with this policing issue there, I, I just can't tell you how grateful I am to live here. So. Well, welcome here. <laughs> seven, we'll try to make you happy and answer your questions. How about seven that? something percent doesn't scare me yet. Okay. But what, the one thing that did scare me, I was reading in the paper an article about um, at a certain population level, um, there's a rule or I guess a bylaw that you need more counselors to a, serve the a, population. There is, I believe it's over 100 thousand who would know that uh that where are we just over 100 just over 100 yep okay so the warning that i have for you is that you know if you can keep doing what you're doing with the amount of counselors that you have um the longer the better i think especially if you're a municipality that has good fiscal um outcomes right because <laughs> It seems that when you get over a certain number of counselors, and I don't know how many, um, it all goes to hell in a handcart because you start to split off into parties. Yeah. And yeah. and I don't know if there's any going back after that. Once you add to the council, probably not. No. And yeah, you split off into parties, and it's just um, it's yeah. There's bad. been it's bad. This has been brought up, and it, and we feel as a council that we we can adequately serve the community with the team that we have. Right. And um, and I would have to agree with you. Um, um, to add more adds more cost to the budgets, obviously. But we got a great team, and we work well yeah. together, and 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 we're all going in the same direction. So we don't see the need to do that. But maybe in three years, if there's a new council, that may be, it it might change. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I also have um, a question, and it's about the, I think it's UMBC. UBC, yeah. UMBC, UBC, UMBC, is that United Municipalities? UBCM. Of, oh, oh, okay. UBCM, yes. Right, okay. So um, something popped up. I guess I Googled something, and, and it's been around since 1910. I wasn't aware of that. Okay. Um, I thought it was something new. No, no, it's been around for a long time. Able to get Councillor Lump to speak in the UBCM. He's uh, he's been a part of that. Uh, not, not so much the organization, but he's in the know on that. I'll let him. Yeah. What, what was your question about the so UBCM? So specifically, um, it's sort of like a bridge to the provincial government. Is that what it is? Yeah, it's it's our association of uh, municipalities across the province. So um, we work together on shared kind of advocacy issues. There's a, there's a number of different regional associations. The Lower Mainland has one. I was the president of the Lower Mainland Local Government Association. Mm -hmm. So they work together right now. Councillor Clute uh, sits as a director on the on the uh, on the association. So you work together to find some shared. Uh, issues that you want to advocate to the province on and and uh, try and catch uh, catch their interest by uh, getting kind of many, many uh, municipalities with the same kind of message working together. So, yeah. so is there strength in numbers? Like, do you find that you can push back against the provincial government? Like you mentioned, um, sorry to point, I don't sorry know your to name, I can't. Your I, worship, but this um, is a budget public hearing. Yeah, so, yeah, so let's, let's stick to the budget. That's what we're talking about, the budget. Right. Okay. okay. So okay. I, yeah, just give me a minute to bring this back to taxes. Um, at some point in the past, I remember hearing that the pr provincial government was going to look into all the municipalities and their accounting practices or, um, and I, and I remember my heart sinking because I thought, oh, they're looking for money. And so they're going to double dip. Is that what happened? Like, do you know that? instance that I'm talking about? Yeah, I think you're referring to the Municipal Auditor General. There was a Municipal Auditor General position that was created and they had issues staffing that office. I'm not sure if the office is still uh, is still functional at this point, but right. uh, I think uh, in terms of your uh, the context of the budget, you, know, you can be uh, assured that the City of Chilliwack works as hard as we can to, you know, to save uh, every penny that we can and we'll, uh, you know, 
check and double check all of our our, our numbers and are very confident in our in our staff and so our financial, so uh, do they right take now. do they take money from you or not? Uh, no, that's they take money from you for that office. I believe that was that was uh, paid for by uh, income taxes paid to the province of BC. But yeah, that's more of a question to the to the province. Yeah, probably. yeah. You just we, we need. Okay, to I was budget. under the understanding okay. that they, you know, that they were taking money from the municipalities to kind of shore themselves up. No, they did performance audits on on a number of different uh, local governments on different things, um, you know, different specific uh, specific items. But mm -hmm. uh, the local governments themselves didn't didn't fund the the office. It was a provincial position, my understanding. Okay, because there was um, um, something in media. I forget if it was on TV or not. And the if mayor you want to of stick to the five minutes as well. You, you you will have two more chances to speak. So oh, like sure. if we can maybe. Let another speaker come up okay. for the first time, and then if you want to come back sure. up again, please. Thanks. I'd be great. Anybody else for a first time? Good evening, Mr. Nelms. But I do need you to your address, please. Uh, Bryden Nelms, 10013 Dublin Drive. Good evening, Mayor and Council. A uh, few questions this year. Uh, the first few are going to be on decisions the provincial government has or hasn't made that have an impact on our 10-year financial plan. And the first one is accident response by the RCMP to Highway 1. It looks like the province will be downloading that service provision to the city, and it will be up to the city to either pay more for more RCMP officers to cover that, or every time they're out doing that new job, we're gonna be losing coverage in town. Um, the city of Delta estimated that it's gonna be a 100% increase in response to highway related uh, accidents and other workload issues. They estimate they're gonna to need to hire six more officers at a cost of approximately 900,000 a year to handle the increased workload, and that'll all be paid by their local taxpayers. In my previous life, I had a little bit to do with scheduling 24 seven posts and to put an officer on every, po every shift 24-7, 365, and then have a spare officer to cover off court duty, maternity leave, annual leave, sick leave, everything yep. else. Yep. Um, that comes to just shy of six person years. So I'm wondering what kind of, um, what's gonna be the result for the budget for that decision when it comes through? Is the city planning to hire more officers that the province should really be paying for but won't? or are we gonna see a service decline in the city? And I noticed this year we're getting three more members for community response, and I was wondering if any of those three members are related to this decision, or is this decision gonna be above and beyond that? Okay, that strategy has been put on hold. Um, we met with the Solicitor General and, and, and we, aired our concerns and, and, and he heard them. And it came from uh, the city of Chilliwack, the city of Hope, the city of Abbotsford, because there'd be all the, there'd be downloading to all those you know, communities because they'd have to look after their chunk of, uh, of the highway that goes to their community. So it is on hold. Uh, um, there is no consultation done with any of the communities. And now I, I, I was a bit concerned of ours because we had absolutely no say in this. We have sent a letter to um, the commander, what, what, what was his name? Um, just, and that's our only uh, uh, route to, to try to block this uh, move from the RCMP. Um, I'll let Councillor Mercer, because he's a little more in depth than that, just with his experience and, and on this file as well. But f from what I can tell you right now, it has been put on hold, so there's no thought about budgetary implications or, or what we need to do. We will have those conversations when we have conversations with the RCMP. Councillor Mercer, if you want to... Thanks. First of all, I love your math. It's 5.75 members uh, to fill a 24-hour, 12-hour shift, but uh, good on you. Um, I want to make something perfectly clear that the structuring of policing in the province of BC is uh, under the Solicitor General's office, not the RCMP. So uh, this is a Solicitor General move um, who um, made a unilateral decision um, to... Um, to require municipalities in Lower Mainland take care of the highway. And uh, as was uh, raised by the mayor, and I think he 
he uh, very graciously understated uh, with what we've been doing. Um, but we've been screaming blue murder to everybody and anybody, including the media. Uh, we are in bed, so to speak, with Delta uh, and Abbotsford. We reminded the transportation minister that uh, while accidents on the freeway were a priority for highway patrol, they weren't our priority. And uh, if there's an accident out there and the traffic's blocked up all the way to Vancouver, we don't really care. It'll be put in the same priority queue. And if nobody is hurt and uh, we don't need an ambulance, um, uh, commerce and and um, traffic jams aren't the uh, priority of a city, city council and their police force, which ours is. Um, that said, it is a, in the provincial area and they have no right to expect municipal resources in our view. And we have followed the contract and uh, launched the required letter uh, which is the start start of the dispute process. So we we, reign, we keep our standing. Uh, so we're doing everything right, and uh, you know it's we're not in this alone. Uh, our detachment here has asked for an additional five resources from the provincial business line uh, for this year to take care of the requirements. Because I think in your comment, um, uh, you know, and, and I won't I won't go on, uh, but but in your comment, you've only got part of it. Um, our challenge uh, that we see is not the highway through Chilliwack. It's that, um, you know, policing, when the phone call is made, regardless of your patch, whether it's RCMP or Delta or Abbotsford, people come running to help. And um, if there's a, uh, an accident on the Coquihalla and Hope attends to it, they, don't have, they won't have a resource on the street. So, uh, and, we, and we know it's not if, we know there's probably three or four a week on the Coquihalla in the winter, never mind the Crow's Nest or Highway 1, it would empty hope and we would be responding to calls for service in hope uh, to backfill those positions that are now from hope up on the highways. So this is just wrong on so many levels, but I can assure you we're doing everything humanly possible uh, to make sure this doesn't become a reality and... Uh, um, we're, we're a little bit more optimistic today than if you would have asked us 30, years, 30 uh, days ago. And thanks for the eloquent response. He filled in some blanks. Go ahead. Uh, thank else. you. Yeah, I actually wrote to the Premier, the Transportation Minister, the Solicitor General, Leader of the Opposition, and the local MLAs. Didn't hear back from any, any of them at all except one local MLA, MLA, and that's when I sent them a little second sonogram, wondering if I'd ever get a response. So it doesn't seem like too many people care when the public asks. Next question is on fire response for medical calls. At the last UBCM, Prince George tabled a resolution calling on the provincial government to cover the cost of fire department response to medical calls. The city estimated that the cost in 2022 was 69,000, which I think is probably low. The article just seemed to indicate that was first aid supplies they use. I'm wondering maybe Councillor Lum would know this, if there's been any response from the city and if the city has any estimate on how much this costs in our taxpayers, given that pure medical response is a provincial responsibility, not a local one. Well, I do not know that number. Mr. Savard, have you got any idea of that number? No. Councillor Lum? Yeah, no, and, and uh, sorry to apologize. Uh, sorry to uh, let you down. That's three strikes, but I will right refer here. it over to the fellow <laughs> yeah. that, uh, that will know uh, yeah. not a number. Uh, for that but before I put him on the spot I think it's been something you know I've spoken to uh, I've had the opportunity to speak to some of the some of our, our firefighting professionals out there and you know um, they seem to indicate that you know there's it's not exactly what they were getting into the job to to do and and it, it you know there's a there's a multiplier effect of attending some of the medical calls and some of the vehicular accidents and some of that stuff so you know, it's uh, it's definitely a, a, an issue and a challenge, and um, you want to stay on top of uh, of the province of whom you know this responsibility belongs, in in, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, to the chief, I guess. Sorry, um, Your Worship, to the speaker, could you repeat your question? I wasn't yeah, I'll go exactly through it sure what you're looking for. At the last UB, UBCM, uh, Prince George put in a resolution that the provincial government reimburse local communities for the cost of responding, fire departments responding to pure medical calls. Uh, their estimate was $69,000 a year it's costing them. So I'm just wondering if you have any idea what it costs us and whether we'll get it or not is another issue. To be honest with you, I don't know the exact cost okay. for our medical supplies. 
Yeah. And to me, it might even go beyond medical supplies, you know, wear and tear on the equipment. Um, backfill, if they're responding to a medical call and a fire happens, you got to call in the paid on call folks. So I imagine it's, if you looked at it, it'd probably be a lot higher than 69,000. But... And just on your comment about stress, I think it was last night or two on Global, there was uh, uh, an article about PTSD in some of the larger fire departments. Yeah. And like you say, they didn't sign up to be first aid attendants or for first responders for, you know, that's what the ambulance service is for, not firefighters. On the mental health side, I know that we provide the best help that these folks can get. And, yep. and I don't know if Chief, if you want to speak into that one as well, but I know that's priority for us and for the fire department as well. Yeah, absolutely, Your Worship. Um, you know, our mental, our physical and mental well-being for our firefighters is our number one priority. So we're doing whatever we can to support them to whatever call they go to. Yep. Okay. Uh, next question. This might be a little early. I might have to come back next year for this one. Um, provincial government, they're changing the requirements so you won't need rezoning for R1A properties to put multiple dwelling units on it. And I'm wondering when that comes to fruition, will the city still have the ability to require developers to install curbs, gutters, sidewalks, street lighting? Uh, can it still be done through the development permit process or is that cost going to be put onto the taxpayers at large? Okay, and uh, we'll tackle this next question because you're way over your five minutes. And then if you want to come back up again, I will. that's good. Ms. Villeneuve. Uh, Your Worship, through to the speaker. Uh, yes, although the uh, land use laws are changing a bit, there will still be development cost charges that will be required to be paid as part of all new developments. So that will still be in, in process. And the province is also introducing additional amenity contribution costs that municipalities can look at. We're still waiting for the provincial manual to come out with all the details regarding these changing laws. So I can't offer yeah. you much more than that. Good. I'll be back. Okay. Anybody else for first time would like to speak into the budget? Now, if you've spoken once and you'd like to speak again for a second time with new information, you'll have three minutes. I'll need your name and your address again. Lisa Maureen, number 5546360, Valley View Road in Chilliwack. This is new information. Uh, according to the community charter in this lady's question in the red coat, the number or uh, the population threshold for a councillor big, council bigger than six councillors and one mayor is 50,000 residents. Chilliwack passed that quite some time ago. And council will remember that I have spoken to this on previous occasions uh, at budget feedback and been told that this was actually not a budget item. Having eight councillors would be appropriate for a city of this size. The reason is it would provide for diversity. For one thing, how many women do you see here? How many people who are Indigenous? How many people who come from different and diverse backgrounds? If we can keep this in, in line with the budget. Okay, so we're, if we're not we're, budgetarily speaking, yeah. how about uh, when it comes up to another election year in three years, we go for eight councillors, please. We'll, we'll, We'll see in three years. Anybody else for a second time with new information? Go ahead. And your name and address again, please. Nola Pap, 42304 South Sumas Road. And I hope I got the address right. I have to think about it once in a while. So um, going forward, like because we're a growing community, um, I do have a story that might be helpful. As long as it um, sticks with the budget on, on what we're talking about today. This would, I think this would save you money. Okay, well, we're not in, <laughs> I'm not saying I'm, you know, like I'm not interested in that, but I want to stay on track with the budget that's in front of us. And, and, and if it has anything to do with that, then we will listen. But if it hasn't got anything to do with that, I want to keep this in lane here. Okay. Um, I'll pass then. Okay. Thank you. Um, I do have a question about the... Um, um, I don't know where she went. I think, I think that's her right there. She was sitting where you are in the green shirt. Uh, it was about the dike. I'll go back to that and just um, clarify something with you. How no, can I connect no, with you? Ma'am, I'm not going to allow that question because it's got nothing to do with the budget. Oh, okay. 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 
Okay. We will get back to you on, the, uh, on that information, but if it's a question about the budget, we will entertain it. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Anybody else for a second time? Mr. Nelms? Brighton Nelms, 10013 Dublin Drive. I'll try to squeeze it all in three minutes. Okay, my first question was going to be about the uh, Squaw Dyke uh, west of Young Road, but you answered that a couple of weeks ago. Congrats for getting that signed off. Finally. Is the $45 million from the feds locked in for that now? Still. Good. Uh, next. Uh, where are we here? Uh, William Street Bridge. I know that came up at this afternoon's council meeting, and um, it's a, a line item for $1.855 I was a little confused on the timing for that, though, after this afternoon's meeting. Uh, the completion for the contract is August 15th, and I'm wondering, is that the day that, that you expect the regulatory approvals from the province, or is that the day that paperwork will all be done and submitted to the province? I, I wish on the first part, but I'll let <laughs> Ms. Jeffers uh, speak into that. Um, the the item that went to council earlier this afternoon, that is the completion of the pre-design package. Okay. So that's when we anticipate having the full package ready to submit. Okay. And right below that, the Hope River Trail Boardwalk, which is a line item. Has that been approved by the province yet? Nope. Nope. No. Okay. And I'm a little confused on the, the what that is going to be. If you look back at the um, 2021... 10-year plan, it was uh, 1 million, I'm sorry, 1.2 million. In 2022, it was 1 million, and now it's down to 320,000. Has that project shrunk? Or? I'll let Mr. Cosker speak to that. Through your worship. Okay. Uh, through your worship to the speaker, it's actually two separate projects. Okay. Uh, we abandoned the boardwalk project because of the quagmire um, um, related to regulatory approvals. Um, the information that we received from consultants indicated that um, it, the expense was going to be way beyond what we had budgeted. Um, the current project underway um, is already, uh, phase one is already complete. It's uh, Chartwell to uh, Kinsman Hope River Park. And then phase two, we're hoping to complete next year if we can get regulatory approval, which will be Hope River Kinsman Park to the end of Wedgwood. Okay, thank you. And the Vetter Trail Bridge, um, again, another line item. I'm wondering if that's been approved by the provincial and federal government and if the TMX money is still on the table for that one. Um, let's talk to Mr. Savard about the money and then we'll go back to Kara about the, the actual approval. Yep. Thanks, Your Worship, to the speaker. Uh, yes, that's correct. The money is still there on the table for that project. And Ms. Jeffers? Um, no, we don't have approvals from the federal or provincial governments yet. Okay. You see if, a pattern here? Do you, uh... yeah, I, oh, yeah, believe me, I know. If we don't get approval, can the TMX money be reallocated? Um, through your worship, yes. We made, through when, we made sure when we wrote the agreement for the funding that yeah. we would be able to fund an alternate project if this one isn't approved. Hope River Bridge might be a good one for that one. Mm -hmm. yeah. And final one here. One last one, quick one. Okay. It's fairly, this actually I just wrote on the way here. I drove through five corners three times today and twice there were people stopped in the middle there on the red light, you know how it goes. Uh, the one tonight, a car stopped, a truck stopped behind him, honking horns, so one guy got out yelling at the other guy, I thought there was gonna be a fight. So I noticed there's a light item for $460,000 of improvement at five corners. I hope you're gonna be, and I don't know what the answer is, but I hope there's gonna be either better signage, flashing signs, more signs or something. It's just starting I, to get crazy. Though. I don't believe it's for the intersection. I believe it's for a little further east when we align the the pathway from the new uh, Paramount project into the 1881 project with uh, rectangular flashing lights. I think, am I correct mm -hmm. on that? Your Worship, yes, you're correct. It's for the, the area east of Five Corners yeah. for the front inch improvements and realignment of the crosswalk. Yeah. And yes, I've, I've had many emails about, you know, like the five corners. You know, it's a unique intersection and there is signage. And um, if people don't re read the signs, well, obviously this is what it causes. So um, I have talked to staff about, 
maybe bigger signage or brighter signage or something, but we'll... Or I'm saying we'll, even like we'll, there's... We'll keep monitoring it. If you're going north on Young, there's a sign up top, but if you had one down below by both of those red lights, that might help a bit. And just a comment on our uh, 7.32 uh, budget increase. We're ha all happy. I'm sure we don't live in a Soyuz. They're looking at 39%. Yeah, I've heard that. Okay, anybody else for a second time? And a third and a final time. And we'll, and we'll just give you a couple of minutes if you have anything new that you want to bring to the table here. Seeing none, move to refer. Move Councillor Clute, second Councillor Lum. All those in favor, oppose. The item has been referred. Next item, please. Next is a public information meeting for development variance permit 1376 with respect to property located at 44200 Progress Way. Ms. Villeneuve. And the purpose of this application is to reduce the overall site landscaping requirement from 10 to 5.7% within the Comprehensive Development 12 zone to facilitate construction of an industrial development. And the property at 44200 Progress Way is outlined in red. The 2040 OCP designates the property as general industrial. The property contains an industrial development that's currently under construction. The proposal is to reduce the overall site landscaping requirement to accommodate three additional parking spaces and improve truck turning. Although 17 trees are proposed to be removed, two trees will be relocated to the front and rear portion of the property and the tree management bylaw requirements are still met. The landscaping variance is considered supportable given the extensive landscaping along the frontage which results in an attractive street. And staff support the requested variance as proposed and recommend approval of the draft development variance permit for property at 44200 Progress Way. Thank you, Ms. Villeneuve. Anybody here wishes to speak into DVP 1376 for the property located at 44200 Progress Way? Just your name and your address. Form part of the record, please, sir. My name's uh, Matt Bateman. Address is 1118 55th Street in Tawasson. Um, I'm just here on behalf of the builder. Our architect couldn't make it, so I'm just here to answer any questions okay. if there is any. Any questions, Council? Well, I appreciate you coming out. That's impressive. I like that. No, I think you're good. And for a second time, and a third and a final time, move to refer, move Councillor Clute, second Councillor Lum. All those in favor, opposed. That item has been referred. Next item, please, Madam Clerk. Next is a recommendation that zoning bylaw amendment bylaw number 5366 with respect to property located at 46185 Stevenson Road be given third reading. Move Councillor Westring, second Councillor Mercer. Any discussion? All those in favor, opposed, motion carried. Next item. And further adoption. Move adoption. Move Councillor Mercer, second Councillor Lum. All those in favor, opposed, items carried. Next item. Next is a recommendation that the 2024 Financial Plan Bylaw, number 5372, be given third reading. Move Councillor Clute, second Councillor Western. Councillor Clute. Thank you. Uh, just a, a few comments briefly here. Um, I don't think anybody's excited about a proposed tax increase, but uh, unfortunately we, along with every other local government, um, are facing uh, high inflation that uh, seems to... I think it's 5.55% just to pay the bills. So um, I, I want to thank um, our staff and our directors for, for looking at every department uh, for efficiencies. And um, as was mentioned uh, by one of the speakers, um, the province is imposing different things uh, down the pipeline that are coming with little or no consultation. So they get an F um, as a grade. And uh, the city of Chilliwag, I'm going to give them an A because I know this group and the passion that's here at this table, as well as our, our outstanding staff, have managed to keep the tax increase from being double digits like many other local municipalities uh, across the, the province. And um, I think as a growing community, we, we have... Um, we have the bills to pay and we, we want to make sure we also um, provide the service uh, increases that uh, are necessary, like public safety. And uh, I'm confident that the budget before us uh, gets us to a place where we can be proud and slowly but surely as we, um, we add additional services and stay within the pay-as-you-go strategy, I think we're doing all our residents a favour and I'm happy to support it this evening. Thank you, Councillor Clute. Councillor Westerink. Thanks, Your Worship. Um, yeah, I think in the past this this uh, council has been um, 
fiscally responsible. And I think uh, last year actually with the four and a half percent was maybe a little bit low and we might be paying for it a little bit now, but um, at 7.32%, if we didn't go that route, we would have roads that would fall into disrepair and uh, streets that would be, uh, you know, not as safe as they're going, going to be. And we had to fund the firefighters and there was all sorts of things. And for me, it's always a balancing act at the end of the day, you know, some people say it's not enough and some people say it's too much. So I'm happy with it. I have no problem supporting it. It's 7.32% is a big, is a big tax hike, but like uh, Councillor Clute said, five and a half percent of that is just inflationary. So yeah. thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mercer. Thank you, Worship. Um, you know, this is uh, my fifth year going through the budget process and it never ceases to amaze me the, the amount of work that Mr. Savard uh, and his team put into um, put into the process. And, and I, you know, I reflect back uh, over the years, our staff keep notes, they listen to council meetings, all of our committee meetings, which we chair and vice chair, and we get together at one point and we all have our wish lists and uh, our, our staff and our, our CAO and our, our, our Finance, Mr. Savard, sit there and nod politely, and then they come back and say, if everybody gets what they want, we'll have a 30% tax increase. So we go like that, and then we talk about what our priorities are, and we look at the surveys, and we come back uh, with uh, a leaner list of priorities, and we're down, and we're down until it comes to crunch time, and then we all come together to do our very best at, uh, um, after listening to what we've heard and what we've seen, we come back and do our very best to do the right thing for the city of Chilliwack. And any time you do that exercise, when you go from everything we want for 30% down to 7.32, there's winners and losers. Um, and, you know, we don't take that lightly. Uh, you know, we arm wrestle, we argue, we cajole, we, you know, we move back and forth trying to get the right pieces of the puzzle in place uh, with always a view of doing best for the city of Chilliwack, knowing that there is going to be um, criticism and, and conflict, but uh, we've done our best uh, and we believe we have the right number. We believe we have the right way forward. Uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to next year and uh, just a special thanks, special thanks uh, to Mr. Savard and his team and all of the uh, directors and managers uh, in the city that have, uh, uh, as they do every year, come together with uh, just a plethora of information and work that's uh, put before us for decision making. Yeah. Thank you. Well said. Councillor Shields. Thank you, Worship. And, and I'll start by echoing the words of uh, Councillor Mercer for, for Mr. Savard, a fellow CPA, and, and the rest of his staff. Oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Yeah. Should we do the high five? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, this was, a, you know, it was, a, it was an interesting conversation as we went through this. And, and, uh, you know, it was it was it was a struggle to to approve something this high, and and uh, you know, I I believe it's unprecedented for Chilliwack to have an increase in taxes this high. Um, it, we shouldn't be ashamed of it from a city council standpoint because we should be proud of it because we are going to continue to to provide the services. We're not going to fall behind. We're 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 going to keep up with everything that we need to. Yeah, there's probably some stuff that will be deferred, but but for the most part, we're gonna we're gonna provide everything that we that we promised to and that we've been doing for years and years, uh, which I think is very important. If we uh, if we didn't go through with this, I would I would actually call us fiscally irresponsible because it wouldn't be a smart policy on our behalf. So I think we're doing the right thing here. Um, I, Mr. Savard, in his presentation, he covered off sort of the 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 whole um, theory behind what we do and why we do it, and I think he did a wonderful job. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna repeat anything he said. I thought uh, it was interesting. I'm as you know the accountant. I kind of run the numbers there, and so our, our average property tax for 2023 was 2,200 bucks. We do a 7.32 percent increase, so that's 160 bucks a year average homeowner and that would include condos townhouses and detached homes i don't want to discount that especially when there's people that are are struggling to even buy groceries these days but if we look at it, it's 160 bucks a year it's 13 bucks a month it's three dollars a week so we're not talking big dollars 
to maintain the services that we currently have in our uh, beautiful city. So I 100% support this. Thank you, staff, for all your hard work. And, uh, you know, hopefully this is the end of inflation. We can get back to normal. Asalam. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Worship. Thank you to everybody who came out tonight to ask questions about uh, the budget. This is my 12th, is that, was that right? 12th, I think, 12th budget now with Something the city like of Chilliwack. And um, certainly this one has a bit of the sticker shock, um, including um, inflation in it. Um, the one thing that I just, you know, a lot of the comments I agree with. The one thing I would add in is um, looking, the thing I'm proud of is looking at our business class multiplier, um, in particular in regard to the small businesses in this community. We treasure a lot of our small businesses and, um, you know, in other places you wonder why uh, small businesses are struggling to keep the lights on and they, it's because they pay in some communities upwards of six, seven, eight times what a residential property tax payer would pay. So at 7.32, multiply that by, you know, seven or eight in other communities, whereas here we're in the lowest uh, in all of our comparative uh, communities. So I think that's something that we keep a close, close eye on. They employ a lot of our friends and neighbors and... Uh, siblings, loved ones, and, um, you know, it's important to me that we continue to have Chilliwack have a thriving small business community. The other thing I'll say is, and we didn't touch on it, but is the attention to uh, infrastructure, the nuts and bolts of what cities um, are required to do. And nobody on the, around this council table was um, interested in cutting back on the responsibility we have to keep our core business, our core function, the infrastructure that we have to maintain and build uh, to keep this city going, to manage the growth that we have, to welcome newcomers and to make sure that, uh, you know, we have good roads to drive on. There's good questions tonight about pavement cut policies. And I'll tell you, nobody around this table gets more frustrated when, you know, it's out of our hands and Fortis comes in and decides to cut up a brand new uh, paved road that we've just done. So, uh, ma'am, don't, don't worry. We're very, I'm very frustrated and so are all my colleagues when that kind of thing happens, but sometimes it's completely out of our hands. But I know that we're putting money, we're investing in infrastructure so we don't leave a deficit to the future, to our our kids, our children, grandchildren, that kind of thing. And it's one of the things where cities around, I've watched make big cuts to their capital programs. They've cut back on their road rehab programs. They've cut the, the quiet, you know, these kind of silent things that people don't really pay as much attention to in, in the budget line items. And that's something that the city hasn't done. We've continued to invest. We will continue to invest. And, and I think that's something we should be, uh, we should be proud of. I will support uh, this budget. Well, it's, it's well said by all all the team here. I know the the day we spent here, the whole day, and and you know from eight o'clock to about four o'clock, and we we did a lot of wrestling, and and um, uh, you know it it it's a testament to the work that we do here, that staff does for us to give us the information for us to move forward. Um, uh, we did not want to fall behind, and um, yeah, it's a it's it's the biggest in, increase that I've actually been at table and I'm going to approve, but it's something that we needed to do. You know, we are a growing community and, and uh, um, contracts come up with the unions and, and uh, um, you know, the RCMP, we had to cover that off as well. So it's, uh, you know, it's challenging, but um, I, I will also uh, vote in favor. I don't think I'm going to be breaking a tie here. I think we're good to go. And I want to thank everybody for coming out and speaking into it. So I'll call the question. All those in favor? Opposed, motion carried. Next item. Next item, Your Worship, is a recommendation that Council approve the issuance of temporary use permit 218 with respect to property located at Unit 101A, 43869 Progress Way, subject to the recommendations as stipulated within the draft temporary use permit. Move Councillor Clute, second Councillor Westering. Discussion? All those in favor, opposed, motion carried. Next item. Next is a recommendation that's subject to public representation. Council approve the issuance of development variance permit 1376 with respect to property located at 44200 Progress Way, subject to the recommendations as stipulated within the draft development variance permit. Move Councillor Lum, second Councillor Clute. Discussion? All those in favor, opposed, motion carried. Next item. Next are the public questions, which are questions that pertain to what was on the agenda this afternoon or this evening. 
Any questions from the public about what we talked about this afternoon or this evening? we can give you a couple of minutes if you'd like. Seeing none, I'm going to move adjournment. Moved by Councillor Lum, second by Councillor Westring. All those in favor, opposed, we are adjourned. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. Thank you.